Hello, welcome back to Piers Rocks. Today, I'm going to show you how to mount a 1541 disc directly as a file system in Linux. When I talk about being able to mount a 1541 as a file system in Linux, I'm not talking about accessing it directly using the OpenCVM commands like CVM copy, CVM read, uh, and so on, which allows you to look at the contents of a disk and copy files on and off using the CVM commands. I'm talking about actually mounting a 1541 formatted disk as a file system in Linux and then being able to use LS, CP, RM, cat, echo, all the standard Linux commands on the files directly. In case you're not familiar with uh, using OpenCBM commands to access a 1541 disk drive, I'll quickly run through that now. So you can see down below me um, the 1541 disk drive that's plugged into my XUM 1541 and then into this Linux PC that I have a shell open for on the screen. And I'm going to put this disk are in the disk drive. This is a formatted disk, has some files on it, and we'll use the OpenCVM commands to take a look at the files on the disk. So we want CVM control, DIR command, device 8. We can see and hear the disk drive being accessed, and we can see that we have a file name or a header for this disk of new disk, uh, ID57, and it's got a bunch of different uh, files on it and if we want to we can copy off the the files using I guess a CBM read I'm not very familiar with the CBM command so let's have a look so CBM read uh, drive 8 file let's have a look at head old Okay, so that should be in the current directory, so we'll just cat that file. Now we've got it on this Linux machine, and we can see that it has hello old in the file. We can also use um, CBM write, so I could rename, um, or even move this hello old into hello old 2, and then we can CBM write. Device 8, hello 2, probably .prg, not entirely sure. Then if we do a CVM control dir8, we can see the files on the disk, we can see hello 2 is on the disk. So that's how you access files using the OpenCVM commands directly, but there's an easier way. So the bit of software that you want in order to allow you to mount this disk directly as a Linux file system is the 1541FS project so you can clone that from github I think it's called 1541FS it is so 1541 relies on having OpenCBM installed on your machine already as you can see I've already got OpenCBM running here. So 1541FS under the covers uses the OpenCBM routines to access the uh, XUM1541 USB device so it can access the disk drives. So as well as having that installed you also need a couple of other packages. There's a readme here. Um, from memory I think there are libfuse3dev and build essentials. I've got build essentials on this machine already, so I'll just install libfuse 3 dev. Once you've got 1541fs cloned, you can go into the fuse directory and you can run make. Once you've built 1541fs, you can mount a disk from your 1541 drive to a mount point of your choosing on your Linux machine. Now, I'm not going to be running this as sudo. If you don't run it as sudo, you need to have uh, permissions to access the USB device that is the XUM1541 on your machine. I do have um, permissions to do that. You also need to have rewrite permissions over the mount point that you want to mount the 1541 disk to. So there's a, an MNT directory actually within this fuse directory that I'm going to mount the disk to. And you simply run the 1541fs fuse command and you give it the mount point. And 
we see there's now activity happening on the 1541 drive. So the 1541 FS Fuse application has done a pre-read of the directory so that we don't have to wait when we actually do a directory listing of this uh, disk drive. Now you'll also see that that command hasn't returned. So there are options to run a 1541 FS Fuse as a daemon. I'm not using that here, so I shall create another uh, shell to access the file system. So I'll log back into my Linux machine that I have the XVM 1541 connected to. I shall go to my fuse directory and then I shall do an ls-ltr of the MNT directory. And we can see we've got a whole bunch of files appearing as a Linux file system here. Now, if we look at the lower down options on this list, we can see the same set of files that we saw on the disk when we used the OpenCBM commands to do a DIR. We can also see a file that represents the header of the disk, the header's new disk and 57 as it was before. And then we have a bunch of other um, files these .cmd files and there's another one, a .cmd file here. So I'll, I'll explain the purpose of all of these in a second. But first of all, uh, I want to reference the fact that the file sizes on these files might look a little bit odd, particularly the files that actually exist on the disk are all set to 256 bytes. That's because 1541FS, the application, has only um, looked at the number of blocks that each of these files use and on a 1541 disk one block represents 256 bytes now the file might be shorter than 256 bytes but a whole block is used a minimum of one whole block is used to write a file so 1541 FS fuse doesn't yet know the size of any of these files so it's assuming that the file is the maximum size that could be given the number of blocks that the file is taking up, which is one in all of these cases. Now, if I actually read one of these files, so I'm going to cap the hellold.prg. First of all, let's just check that we get the right contents of this file. Yep, we get hellold. We checked that with the CBM commands earlier, so we know that's what's in the file. If we now do another ls ltr of the mount directory, we'll see that the hellold file is now nine bytes in size. That's because 1541 FSFuse has read the file and knows it's exactly nine bytes long. It is now giving that information to the Linux kernel to which can then in turn provide the right file size. Now if we were to do another if we were to force 1541 FSFuse to do another directory listing of this disk, which we'll do in a second, then it's going to forget that file size because as far as it's concerned someone else might have come along this disk may have been taken out rewritten in another drive reinserted and this hellall.prg may now be a different size so let me show you how to force a directory reread you may have guessed it already you can echo any string whatsoever to the dir underscore reread dot command file so if I do that if I echo one to mnt dir reread cmnd then we see the 1541 disk drive is being accessed it's down there for you and if we now do a listing of that directory we'll see that halald has reset itself to 256 bytes long so this now starts to give you an idea of what the .cmd files are for. They're essentially special made up files that are created by 1541FS and that then represents those files to the Linux kernel so you see them in a directory listing. They don't exist on the disk but they allow you to to access additional functionality associated with a 1541 disk or 1541 drive. So let's explore some of the other ones of those. Um, um, the other thing to point out actually with these is that they all have their own unique file sizes. Why is that? Well, with most of them, you can actually cat the file and it will provide you some instructions associated with the file. So if we cat dir reread, then it tells you how to force a, a disk um, directory reread, which is exactly 
what I did. Similarly, we can cat the disk format .cmd, and that will tell you how to reformat the disk that's in the disk drive. And the way you do that is you echo the disk name, comma, the ID you want to this file, and it will reformat that disk. Doesn't ask you for any confirmation, just goes ahead and reformats the disk. Exec command um, does probably what you'd expect it to do. If we take a look at that file, then it shows you how you can actually run a command directly to the disk drive itself. For example, you could run the i initialize command on the disk drive just by doing echo i to that command. I'm not going to do that, but that's how you would do it. There's also some other um, quite interesting files here, like get status now, get last error, and get last uh, status. So get last error, if we cap that, it will show us a string representing the last error that 1541FS received from the 1541 disk drive. It's blank here because there was no error. Since running 1541FS and it resetting the, the IEC bus, there's been no errors from this uh, disk drive. Uh, we might force an error later so we can see that. We can also uh, look at the contents of getLastStatus.cmd and that will show us the last status that was returned by this disk drive. Now, 1541FS internally has been querying the drive status, so there should be a last one of those to query. There we go. So the last status was 00. zero. Now, actually, I knew that already because the file size of get last status is set to a special value to indicate what the last uh, status was. Similarly, for get last error, it's set to a special value. It's basically it's set to 100 plus the last error or last status code received from the drive. Here, the last status code or last error was 0, and therefore it's showing 100. So I think we should reformat this disk. So let's do that now. So we want to echo a disk, na disk name. So Piers Rocks, comma, 07 to uh, b -b 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 mount. I can't remember what it was called, but we can use bash completion in Linux to find the all the files as disk format.cmd. So we can hear the heads knocking in the disk drive as it goes through and it reformats the disk. So we'll be back in a few moments once the format has completed. The format's completed now. Uh, you may have noticed that the um, echo command didn't actually complete and return back to the shell until the format was complete. There's no point really in returning more quickly because nothing else can happen on that file system until the format has completed. So let's take a look at the disk now and see what's on it. So we can see that we've got all of our .cmd uh, fake files on there and we can see there's a header file Piers Rocks, comma, 07. There's no files though there because we just reformatted the disk. So let's create a file. Let's create our hello world again. And let's take a quick look. And there we go. We've got the hello world file. And obviously it knows it's nine bytes long because it just wrote the file to the uh, disk. Another thing I wanted to do is show you the command line options for this file system. Um, so a lot of these options are just standard Fuse application options. These are the options for this particular file system type. So you can pass in the device number and devices 8, 9, 10 and 11 should work. I've tested 8 and 9. Uh, the bus reset option allows you to force an IEC bus reset before mounting the disk drive. I didn't do that here because I just turned the disk drive on. That might be useful if the 1541 disk drive gets into a dodgy state. Um, you can run it with a dash u option, which when you actually instruct the file system to format the disk, it pretends it's formatted it, but it doesn't actually reformat the disk. That's quite useful for testing. And then there's a dash z option, which demonizes 1541 uh, FS fuse so that it doesn't sit there never returning. There's full syslogging supported by 1541 FS fuse so that if you hit any problems, you can uh, debug. It's, it's still very much a work in progress. There's, 
I've implemented basic reading and writing functionality uh, to the file system. I haven't implemented appending files or anything particularly complex at this point, but it's functional and it's um, it proved quite useful for me so far. So next, I'm going to do a couple of things. One is I'm going to take a look at a, an off-the-shelf disk and check that we can read it with and we can mount it as a Linux file system. And then we'll take a look at this disk that we've written in this 1541 using uh, Linux, the Linux support. We'll take a look at that in a 1541 connected directly to a Commodore 64 and check that we see what we should see. Okay, so I've inserted the Arkanoid uh, 2 disk and I will force the file system to reread this disk now. So if we cat, um, sorry, echo 1 to uh, DIR reread. So now, should have done the reread. We'll have a look at the mount directory. Uh, so we can see a bunch of files on this disk. We can see title1.prg. We can see all dashes, prg, and file2 and file3. Um, we don't have a header. So I'm guessing that the header for this disk doesn't conform to whatever format I'm expecting to see in the application. Actually, I thought we'd start with the Arkanoid 2 disk just to see what the header looks like um, when loaded in a stock 1541. Dollar. So there we go. We've, we do have a header on here, but it doesn't look like a standard header because it doesn't have a two-digit ID associated with it. There's also a couple of extra files that I don't think I saw. Yeah, I did see title one, file two, and file three, but I didn't see that one that begins uh, uh, quotes, exclamation mark, quotes, VMAX, exclamation mark. So probably that confused the uh, 1541FS application. Anyway, let's take a look at the other disk, the one that we formatted and then wrote a file to uh, mounted as a Linux file system. There we go, it's got the right header, Piers Rocks, with an ID of 07, and it's got a hello old file written to it as well. So this disk looks good, looks like it's been written successfully. Um, despite being accessed directly as a Linux file system. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this quick video showing you how to use 1541FS to mount a 1541 disk and disk drive as a file system natively in Linux. The way this works is it's implemented as a, a Fuse file system. You notice we installed the Fuse 3 development package earlier. So Fuse is a, a kernel module within Linux that allows you to write a file system as a user space application rather than as a kernel um, plugin. So it's much easier to write a file system that way and Fuse handles all the complicated stuff of uh, interacting directly with the kernel and sits as a kernel module and then pops everything out into user space for your file system to access. So that's what I've built here is a user space application to um, provide Fuse support for a 1541 disk. Not sure how much further I'm planning to take uh, this application. I guess we'll find out. But it's very interesting as a proof of concept to figure out how to A, write a Fuse file system and B, whether I could actually get a 1541 disk mounted natively in Linux and using all the standard Linux shell commands. As it turned out, I can. So very happy about that. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing for more videos like this one. Until next time, rock on.